The last demonstration I want to do today uh, is a highly exothermic reaction, which is called the dehydration of sugar. Now, sugar is C12H22O11. Okay, it's called sucrose by chemists. It's um, uh, just known as table sugar to the rest of us. And uh, one way to write the empirical formula of this substance is C12H2O11. That's one of the reasons why these kinds of foods are called carbohydrates. There's carbon and there's water. Hydrate is the water part. And what sulfuric acid can do, H2SO4, is actually remove that water and leave behind only the carbon. Okay? Sulfuric acid is an extremely important industrial chemical. It's produced uh, in enormous amounts every year in this country. Uh, and it is, in fact, usually the most, uh, the largest amount of any chemical that is produced is um, sulfuric acid. It's very important industrially. It's a very strong acid. And in its concentrated form, which we have here, it has a concentration of 36 moles per liter. I'm sorry, it has a concentration of 18 moles per liter. The hydrogen ions, which are available because there's two per mole, uh, is 36 moles per liter. So by comparison, vinegar is about 0.8 moles per liter. This is normal table vinegar. Uh, and that is about 45 times weaker as far as acids go. So it's 45 times more powerful than regular table vinegar. In addition to its properties as a strong acid, it is also a very powerful dehydration agent. Hydra, uh, sulfuric acid forms very strong attractions with water. When it dissolves in water, enormous amounts of heat are released. And we're going to use that power of the, the, uh, the acid interactions with water to create some heat to get this reaction started. Chemical reactions, even when they're exothermic as this one is, do sometimes need a little bit of a kickstart. Like when you strike a match, you have to put some energy into the match to get it started. So with part of the energy we're going to apply here is the hydration energy. One way to describe these processes here is to combine these two chemical reactions for which we know the energy change and to find out what the energy change is for the chemical reaction we're interested in. This is known as Hess's law and uh, it allows you to figure out chemical uh, energy changes for chemical uh, reactions for which you don't actually know them and they are hard to measure. But enough chit chat, let's actually do the demonstration. So this is concentrated sulfuric acid, it's really heavy. It's extremely dense material, and it's something that you don't want to handle uh, without proper protection. So that's why I'm wearing <coughs> safety goggles and a lab coat, and I'm going to put on these, uh, these rubber gloves. Now I'm going to measure out 40 milliliters of this, and I have about 40 grams of sugar in my beaker. I'm not sure how easy this is to see from a distance, but it's very, very thick, viscous material. I'm going to close that up really tight, put it back in my safety container here. All right, and then I'm going to add it right to the sugar. Now, clearly, something's happening. It's turning yellow. Okay, we're going to let the color changes happen here. It's dehydrating the sugar. It's taking the water away from it, which is diluting the sulfuric acid. It's releasing some heat. You can already feel it getting warm. It's not really hot yet. It will be very hot in a moment. I'm going to let it turn nice and brown like this. Oh, there's black in the middle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water to it to really get things going. Steam starts to be produced because of the interaction between the acid and the water. There we are. And now the reaction's truly underway. There's a strong odor of burnt sugar, which I'm sure you will all enjoy in a moment or two. <laughs> and what's happening is that the water is being removed and the carbon is being left. So this is the same stuff as charcoal or graphite. And the bubbles that we see here were, up until a moment ago, completely full of water vapor, steam. And as that water vapor um, expanded, it pushed its way out 
bursting all of these bubbles. So now we have this sort of honeycomb structure of all of these individual places that uh, used to have the water vapor in them. And just as one final thing we can do, I want to show you uh, just how fragile this stuff is. Each of the sugar grains, of course, was separate, and there was no reason for them to really stick together in any really fundamental way. This is very hot now. So the material itself is actually pretty fragile. And so you can break it right up. And you don't want to pick it up with your bare hands because it still has quite a lot of residue from the sulfuric acid on it. So there you have an example of another exothermic <coughs> reaction. Some people call this the carbon souffle reaction. And uh, it's very impressive and a lot of fun to do. In this short clip, we will witness the dehydration of sugar by sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is 98% sulfuric acid by mass, and so is highly concentrated acid. It is a powerful dehydration agent, and when added to a carbohydrate, such as table sugar, will remove the water in an exothermic reaction, leaving behind black carbon. When the sulfuric acid is first added, it causes a series of color changes from the original white of the sugar to yellow, to brown, to black. Things don't really get going though until we add some water, which I'll do in a moment. The water, when it touches the sulfuric acid, causes an exothermic reaction of its own. When sulfuric acid is diluted with water, it releases an enormous amount of heat. This is enough to get the reaction going, in which the sugar becomes fully dehydrated by the sulfuric acid. Steam bubbles form, which inflate the structure into a great height. The smell of burnt sugar is very strong. And there you have the dehydration of sugar by sulfuric acid.